Good morning, it's Rob Timmings again here from ECT for Health and Knowing Your Jargon. Uh, we've got another KYJ for you this morning. So this is um, part seven of our eight part epic respiratory physiology jargon series. If you haven't caught the previous six, certainly do so. We're going to unpack the meaning of the PF ratio and the AA gradient in this video. So bear with us again, a little bit geeky and a little bit sciencey, and it would really have helped for you to have watched videos, particularly videos three, four, and five, because there's some prerequisite maths, um, which sort of leads into this sort of stuff. So let's get started with, um, uh, to start with, let's start with our PF ratio. The PF ratio, is used to calculate, among other things, um, a, a, a diagnostic criteria for acute lung injury. When somebody presents with an acute lung injury, type 1 or type 2, uh, a bit of an old-fashioned term for that was ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, ARDS. Um, it was calculated, or it is calculated based on what's called the PF ratio, and it's a mathematical formula. Very, very easy mathematical formula. Let's get straight to it. The P in the PF ratio is the PaO2, and we would only ever be able to calculate that value from a blood gas analysis. The F value is the FiO2, and so a PF ratio, therefore, is, as the name implies, a mathematical formula, a ratio, a division of the PaO2 ratioed against, or in other terms, divided by the FiO2. FiO2. Alrighty, so let's have a look at an example of that. A normal PF ratio would be considered to be uh, where I had a PaO2 that was normal. Let's say I was breathing room air, so I absolutely know that my FiO2 is 0.21, so I've got an oxygen-inspired mix of 0.21. I've got a PaO2 when I measure my blood gas, and let's say my PaO2 came back at 90. Now, if I simply did this mathematical equation, 90 divided by 0.21, I come out with a number that is about 420, Oh God, 27-ish, somewhere around there. Certainly above the 420 mark. This is called my PF ratio. And the short answer is, is it normal or isn't it normal? My PF ratio needs to be above 400. Now, if my PF ratio is below 400, we would say that it's suboptimum. So if I've got a P to F ratio, that is less than 300, this is how we would diagnose acute lung injury, level one. And when it drops down below or equal to 200, then I've got ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome would be a diagnostic criteria for ARDS. Of course, there'd have to be some other diagnostic criteria, like you need to have um, pulmonary edema on top of this, these, this maths. You've got to have pulmonary edema, uh, and that pulmonary edema cannot be cardiogenic. So you can't have had a myocardial infarction, and that put you into left heart failure, which, which resulted in pulmonary edema, and therefore you get a, a VQ mismatch there. So if I did a PF ratio, I had pulmonary edema and pneumonia, uh, and my PF ratio was less than 200, then you would say that that patient could be quite categorically diagnosed with an acute respiratory distress syndrome. And that simply means that if I've got X amount of oxygen in my lungs, it should translate to gas exchange across and into my arterial blood. My PaO2 is arterial blood. So that's my PF ratio. Let's see if we can muck around with that PF ratio and give ourselves a PF ratio that is quite nasty. Like how low, or how would we get a patient with a PF ratio that might be on the wood as far as ARDS is concerned? And so there's a classic old rule called the 50-100 called the rule. The 50-100 rule. And the 50-100 rule 
refers to a patient that's on a 50% mask. So they're breathing oxygen at 50%. So you can calculate what your P as what your FiO2 would be. FiO2 when somebody's breathing 50% oxygen is 0 0.5. Yeah. And let's say I was to do a set of blood gases on that patient and their PaO2 value, their PaO2 value came back at PaO2 value came back uh, at 100 millimeters of mercury. Then we could quite categorically say that whilst this 100 on the outset looks normal, it's really only considered to be normal if the patient was breathing room air. That's certainly not normal if the patient was breathing a 50% oxygen mask. So let's run those numbers. An FiO2 of 0 0.5 is my F value, my FiO2 value. And if I was to ratio that against a PaO2 of 100, because I've just done a blood gas on this guy and he's got a PaO2 of 100, you can see that the mathematical equation here is 100 divided by 0 0.5, which gives me a number that is 200. That is right in the diagnostic criteria for ARDS. So you can see that if somebody has got a 50% oxygen mask on and their PaO2 is still really crappy, then, um, then yeah, you've got yourself a patient that's got such poor gas exchange across their respiratory membrane that you could say that there was an acute lung injury or some sort of an injury to that respiratory membrane, acute respiratory distress syndrome. That's the PF ratio. I'm going to stop the video there or pause the video there and we'll do part B of part 7. So that was called part 7A. We'll come back and do part B in just a second. You'll have to click the next video.